Good morning. Today is actually good afternoon, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. Your hand should be down. Today um, we're going over spiral review 19 for block 2. And this spiral review is due on Friday, February 18th. You can turn your spiral review in on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday for a pre-check. And I, you can then correct it and turn it back in on Friday. Now, I made a deal with Block 1 this morning to encourage you to turn this in for a pre-check. If you turn it in on Monday for a pre-check, you can get three armor tickets. I'm sorry, not Monday. Shh, Tuesday. Okay, can you quit yelling out, please? If you turn it in by Tuesday at 10 a.m. for a pre-check, you can get three armor tickets. I do not want you rushing through it to get it turned in today. And it has to be done with your best effort. Okay. If you turn it in and you're missing half of it, I am not pre-checking it and you're not getting any armor tickets. Okay, it takes me a lot of time to pre-check these spirals. If you turn it in on Wednesday for a pre-check by 10 a.m., you can get two armor tickets. And if you turn it in by Thursday by 10 a.m., you can get one armor ticket. Then when I go over and I grade it over the weekend next weekend, if you have gone back and made corrections at every problem that I pre-checked and counted wrong, you can get another armor ticket. Okay, you have to attempt to correct each problem. You can come and ask me or Mrs. Amspa for help any day during RTI. Okay, so it is your response. No one should be getting anything less than an A on these. Okay, so let's make sure that we all understand the directions. Please do not be working ahead. At this time, you've already seen it, so you've already had a chance to start. But now I want you to focus on my directions that I am going over. Yes. A minus is acceptable. Okay. Round the following numbers to the underlying place value. So highlight the word round. Okay. We're rounding it to the thousands place. Draw your arrow. This one, note that it has a decimal, so it needs to be rounded to the tenths place. Draw your arrow. Remember the rule for decimals is we do not change the digits after the rounding place to zero. We just drop them. Name the value of the underlying digits. This should be written as a number. Okay, if you write this as a word, it will get counted wrong. A value is a number. Okay, here is our decimal. Uh, again, we're writing the value of this number. Just note the decimal point. Name the place value of these underlying digits. Again, we need to note the decimal point. And then find the following answers using the numbers 415 and 8. You need the sum and the quotient, and there is a place to show your work. Yes, sir. Uh, is it quotient mm -hmm. You'll have to look that up or ask me for a freebie. Okay. Addition, subtraction, multiplication. This is a um, addition, and you're going to want to write that number as 85 decimal point zero zero because this number to the right goes to the hundredths place. Please pay attention to what I'm doing. You should have all the things that I have. So then when you line that up, you always line up those decimal points. Okay, we'll do the same thing we did last week. You need to make sure that you check your work. So we'll just draw a line here and put a check. You're gonna add back to check. This is multiplication. You're gonna wanna set up a three by two box. Okay, and then this is division. The divisor just has one digit. Okay, turning that over. I am counting wrong this week if you don't follow these directions that I am pointing out. You must change it to fraction with a common denominator. So 
So what's our denominator going to be on this one? 12. And you must add the zeros to the decimal number before comparing. If you do not do that, it's going to be counted wrong. It is in the directions and we're going over it. Okay. Here you need to figure out how to fi uh, do the missing number for that decimal. This measurement, you can find the conversions in your planner on page in your planner we haven't done that page in your math journal yet so they're not there on page 107 in your planner you can find the conversions on page 107 in your planner okay here you're listing multiples here you're listing factors know the difference Solve for S. If S is 5, what does 15S mean? 15 times S. Okay? So it is not 155. You have to multiply 5 times 15. Okay, this area of this complex shape, don't forget the... Area of this triangle is area equals half of the base times the height. Okay, so find that area. Here, the whole line has a measure of 180 degrees. If this much of it is 65, how much is this? Draw your ray. The end point begins in the south and continues north. There's a little compass for you to look at. You need to be clear that it is going south to north. Last week, I accepted some that were angled and it was supposed to be right to left. And I did accept a little bit of an angle, but if it's south to north, that needs to be straight, up and down, not at an angle, okay? Okay, and then this, guys, every week, it's the same. Use the ruler, put points and letters and arrows. Use your blue sheet to help you. You should know exactly how to draw an array. It's on the blue sheet. We've been doing this every week for probably 12 or 13 weeks. Okay, Mrs. Young had a great time in New York City. Boy, she's just so popular in math today. She took a taxi from Rockefeller Center where she enjoyed an hour of ice skating to the World Trade Center. The taxi fare included a base charge of $2.50. As soon as she entered the cab, plus an additional 50 cents per minute traveled. The route usually takes 18 minutes, but with heavy traffic, the time increased to 37 minutes. How much did Mrs. Young pay for her cab? If she paid with a $50 bill and left with a $3.50 tip, how much change will she get? Okay, there's some unneeded information in here. What is it? What is the information that we don't need? McKenna? Well, I'm talking about specific numbers. Some things that we circled when I evaluate. What do we not need that we circled? Marin? We don't need to, this number. An hour is not important because we're just trying to figure out how much she paid for the cab. What else do we not need? Cordelia? 18 yep, we don't need the 18 minutes. That's just confusing. Oh. Okay, so she pays 250 plus 50 cents per minute and then she's gonna tip 350. How much does she pay for her cab and how much change does she get? Okay, are there? I will take three freebies. Raise your hand if you would like a freebie. Henry. Uh, factors. Okay, the factors are the numbers that we multiply to get a certain product. So what can I multiply to get 15? Wait. What can I multiply to get 15? Carter Nelson. One and 15, what else, Deacon? Three and, five. Three and five, and usually we need to put those in numerical order. Okay, all right, Gemma. 
One pint? Yes. Okay, if you'll go to the page in the planner that I told you, okay, and find one pint equals two cups. So one pint equals two cups. Okay? Okay, next, Haley. The inequality, which one? The fraction or the decimal? Okay, so first of all, I said you're losing a point if you don't put that zero there, so go ahead and put that there. Okay, and you start with your largest place value. They both have a four in the ones place. Then here's a zero in the tenths place and a seven in the tenths place. Okay, so which one is bigger? Seven tenths or zero tenths? Seven tenths. Okay, one more freebie. Carter Thompson. Uh, the 15S plus yes. Okay, so if S is five, then that needs to be 15 times five. Remember we talked about that dot meaning times, and then we add seven, and that equals T. So what is 15 times five? Can we count it out? 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. So 75 plus 7 equals T. So what is T? 82. Okay? All right, go ahead and put that plus the problem solving paper in your math folder. You can put the, the spiral in your VIP folder if you choose.